Hey everyone, today is Thursday, the 12th of January. I have some news to share with the rest of you. Um, how best to start? When I was a kid, uh, this was mid-90s. I want to say 95, but it was most likely 1996, because I did the math in my head earlier, uh, where I came home from spending practically the entire summer with my grandparents to find, to look down into the right, into our family room, and see my dad sitting at a new computer. Okay. Uh, it was also in a place I hadn't expected. Uh, and he was playing a game I had never seen before. Uh, this game was XCOM UFO Defense. Now, forgetting my bag right next to the front door of being, you know, out of town for like a month or three, uh, I immediately went downstairs and got enraptured in whatever the hell it was my dad was doing. Um, come to find out, this is where my second wave of gaming came in. I started playing XCOM UFO Defense, Master of Orion, Master of Magic, Privateer, Wing Commander 3, SimCity 2000, and a whole plethora of other games that were on the three and a half inch floppy as opposed to the five and a quarter. Uh, as well as, um, that was my introduction to CD gaming. So, um, this beast of a machine, this 486 with, you know, megabytes of RAM, uh, was hands down the most powerful thing I had ever used since our 286 with, like, kilobyte, uh, a kilobyte of RAM, or something like it. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what the old computer has. Though, we still have it in the basement, and we have the next oldest one in the basement as well. But anyways, I, I told you all that to tell you this. I've been playing XCOM UFO Defense off and on since 1996, 1995. So about 15 so years. 15, 16 years. I come to find out yesterday that Firaxis, the spiritual descendant of Microprose, who made XCOM originally and Civilization and so forth, are making a faithful reimagining of the original XCOM game. It's going to be turn-based. It's going to be uh, have a more streamlined interface. It's going to have the same aliens, just redone. It's going to have the same precepts. They have the Sky Ranger, and it looks like it should in high def, comparatively speaking. Uh, I mean, all the things I've been seeing are fantastic. And the Game Informer website is releasing features on the game development throughout this entire month. So I hit it last night, and they had only released like four articles on it. So I'm looking into this, and I'm going, oh, holy crap, new game by the end of the year. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I mean, originally all I was looking for was information on the uh, first person 1950s sci-fi B-movie style shooter that was originally supposed to come out this March and they bumped it back a few months because two reasons, they want to polish it up mechanically speaking, and the other one is they don't want it to compete with Mass Effect 3, which is respectable. Definitely. Mass Effect 3 is a game killer. If you release a game within a week of Mass Effect 3, it's going to die. Guaranteed. Uh, two weeks, you've got a little bit of breathing room, but it'll probably die. Any more than that, you're probably okay. Uh, but, yeah, I've already got my... March 6th, I'm expecting a package at my front door. So, uh, but but beside all that, this, this is exceptionally exciting for me, and it's rekindled my drive to play the original XCOM UFO Defense. So what t this morning con constituted of was, okay, I'm going to patch Star Wars The Old Republic, and then I'm going to play XCOM, uh, well, which I'm going to do once I'm done with this. So I don't know whether I should pick up my old game where I left off, because it's been a while since I've touched it, or start a new game and just go with it. Because uh, I'm, I just, God, I love that game. And I've, over the years, I've developed new strategies, and I have different approaches to it, and I'm a bit more aggressive than I used to be as a kid. As a kid, I was terrified of this game. Uh, aliens coming out of the darkness, and you whip around a corner to only get shot in the face. You know, things like that. They absolutely terrified me. And the music, the, the dun 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 dun, you just terrifying. The entire mission. And the most freaky of all the aliens was the chrysalid. This smiling, uh, uh, armored carapace kind of creature. About the size of a large human. 
and doesn't have any guns, just has pincers. The thing is, the dude has like 160 time units. He can go from one side of the map to the other in the same turn and still have enough time to hit your guy and turn him into a zombie. And then you shoot that zombie or that zombie's lumbering around enough and the zombie cracks open and it's a new chrysalid right there who can just infect someone else all over again. And it's, oh, terrifying. I wrote an article about my uh, impressions on the game, my ideas on the game, my opinions on how best, how I play it back then. Uh, I, I still use those same strategies. I wrote an article uh, on my blog back in April of 2010. So uh, I'll put a link to that specific article down below. Uh, I'll also put a link to the overarching page for Game Informer for all the features that they're doing for the new XCOM game. This is not a shooter. This is a turn-based strategy game. If you don't like turn-based strategy games, get the fuck out of my house. Um, no, the, the, the real thing is I have a couple of friends who started with XCOM Apocalypse, and you had the choice of turn-based or real-time. Now, I've I grew up doing it turn-based, and I was having a hell of a time with it. Uh, it's a hard game. It's very hard, even on the easiest setting. And when I tried it on real-time, I saw just how genuinely easy it could be. I mean, it has a pause function and everything. So, I mean, I, I get how real-time XCOM Apocalypse could be, but this is the original game, and you want to stay with the terror of of not seeing what happens during the alien's turn. It's part of the atmosphere having it as a turn-based game, and I understand it. It would be really cool if they could also give us a real-time option like they did in Apocalypse. But if they don't, it's it's okay. It's okay. Also, I hear it's only a single-player game right now, so, like I said, it would be... Uh, you, you know, it's one of those things. It would be awesome if it had multiplayer, but really it's the single-player experience that it's all about. It's all about terrifying yourself playing this game. It is hands down the only survival horror thing I really have subjected myself to. I've played a little bit of Doom 2. I've played, uh, I can't get past the first part of Half-Life, mostly because I get so motion sick. Uh, and there are other games that, that, well, there were games as a kid, like Car where in the USA is Carmen San Diego. And that, that game scared the crap out of me as a kid, too. But most of the time, it was because I was playing it kind of in a darkish room. Uh, it was our guest bedroom at the time. And uh, and uh, it was on the 286, and there was only one light fixture, and it was, like, above my head, behind me. And so in order to see the screen without glare, you'd have to turn it off. So the room is mostly dark. There's a window behind you, but, you know, there's a shade pulled. So there's a little bit of light getting around it. There's light coming out from under the door, and there's the computer. And... Yeah, Carmen San Diego is freaky. Anyways, uh, so I'm going to put links to those things down below. Uh, my article on XCOM from April 2010, my uh, and a link to the Game Informer feeder page for all these nifty articles. I highly recommend you check this out. This is a fascinating look at the, the scaling from 1994 to 2012 of a classic game. They're reimagining it. They're not remaking it like, you know, A to A, you know, it's... or lowercase a to capital A. This is lowercase a to, like, a Cyrillic A. I mean, it's gonna be the same thing, just different. So, yeah. Anyways, until next time.